2018 was the year that I decided to dedicate myself more to booktube, to upload regularly and to read more, but also to read more widely. I already reached my Goodreads reading challenge goal and then changed it to 100 books instead of 50. And today, since I've been tagged a few times to do various mid-year review videos, here is my year so far. So I'm pretty pleased with how my reading is going at the moment. So far in the year I've read 55 books and it's actually been quite a big mixture of books. I would say that in the first few months I read a lot more non-fiction that I rented out from the university library. And I read a lot more plays or play collections. I had said to myself that I wanted to read more plays and non-fiction. Um, so I guess I obviously did that at the start and then haven't really read, haven't really read any plays since, though I do have some coming up that I would do want to read. And I've, I think I've sustained reading um, the non-fictions. Then I guess in the, the middle of this six month period, I read a lot of the Little Black Classics and they were quick and easy to read. Um, they're the sort of books that I feel have boosted up my book count, I guess, without really feeling like I have actually read that much. And in the past few months, I've read a lot more general fiction books, whether they be, um, SFF or literary fiction or kind of classics. So yeah, I think it's been a real big mix over the six month period. I've kind of set myself like mini challenges, I guess. So like we had February and February in which I read books by women. And in April, I did the 24 hour readathon in which I tried to read one book in 24 hours and I did that. And in May, I used tips to see if I could enhance my reading and get more reading done. And I've enjoyed doing that whilst I have had some like personal sort of challenges that I wanted to keep. It has been nice to kind of do like smaller ones that make it seem a lot more manageable and can sort of give me a push to do the things that I want to do but haven't actually really been doing. Over the six month period, I've actually had a really broad range of star ratings for the books, which really goes to show that I've actually been pretty decent at kind of getting books that I would enjoy. So of all of them, I only had one one star book and that was um, three Tang Poets, which was a little black classic, and I just didn't see the point in it, I didn't enjoy it, and I didn't finish it. So other than that, from the two star reads, only 16% of my books were two stars, so that equates to nine books in total. And then for three stars, I had 31%, which equates to 17 books. And then for four stars, I had 33%, which equates to about 18 books. So you can see that the majority of my books were either three or four stars, which I think is actually pretty decent. And then finally, about 18% of my books, which is 10 books, were five stars. So it's nice that actually, my four and five star reads is the exact same as my one, two and three star reads. So I think like, you know, that's a good sign that I'm actually picking up the books that I do enjoy and that I am interested in rather than just feeling like I need to read stuff. Now I did say at the start of this video that I was tagged in a lot of the um, mid-year check-in tags. Um, there's two, I think, the mid-year check-in and the mid-year freak out. And I'm not a wholly percent sure the difference between the two. I mean, I haven't gone into great depth. I like, I've watched the videos and they both kind of have very similar questions. So I'm kind of just doing my own thing, um, which I think will probably answer most of the questions. So I guess one of the things that I do want to talk about is actually probably like my top reads of the year. Like I said, I've had 10 books so far, which are my five star reads. And of them, although one of them actually that I'm about to say wasn't a five star read. And of them, I wanted to just highlight a few which I wanted to share with you and kind of promote further because I probably have already talked about them quite a lot on my channel before and I just think I can talk about them some more. So I think one of my favorite books of the year, which was probably one of my favourite accidents of the year, um, was The Boy Who Stole Attila's Horse by Ivan Rapilla. Now, I picked this up from a hardware <laughs> shop um, that's just randomly on the high street, and obviously the woman who works there has some good reading taste, and I think she sells on her books um, just at the front of her shop, just for a pound or two. And one of them was The Boy Who Stole Attila's Horse. Now, this book is definitely one of those books that I read at the right time, and it just was perfect for that moment that I read it, but I do feel that it's perfect for a lot of different moments. It's about um, two brothers that are stuck in the bottom of a well, and it's just the story of them trying to get out, and the way that they kind of move through having hope, through going through despair, through regaining hope, and coming up with plans to get out. And it's all very allegorical of being kind of just worn down and left 
to fend for yourself. And I think the author chose to represent an economical situation in which, you know, you have lost everything and you are trying to survive with so little and the government who should be helping you aren't. But it can be read to mean so many different things. And for me, it was very much about when I was like job hunting and everything. And I just lost all faith in jobs because nobody was getting back to me. Nobody was responding to emails. Nobody was interested in anything. And it just feels like you're being worn down and down and down until you have no value at all. So for me, that this book was just highly important for me at that time. So one of my favorite authors that I've found this year was actually Georges Bataille. Now, I've known about him for a while because of my interest in the Surrealist movement, and I've read like a lot of nonfiction in which he has been a part of the text. Um, but this year was the year that I finally got around to reading him, and I read The Story of the Eye by him, and I really enjoyed it. It was definitely so vastly different to what I expected it to be, yet it was just kept on punching me and giving me more of things I didn't realise that I was actually interested in. And it was a really great experience to kind of read this book and fall into a story of such depravity, yet be asked the questions between what is the difference of pornography and art. Asking questions which I think people shy away from a lot, and it was really interesting to actually read that as a work of fiction, and then to have essays by people that I am interested in kind of discussing it further was definitely a really, it just made it such an enjoyable experience and a really thought-provoking one in a way that I wasn't actually expecting. Whilst I thought I would enjoy it, I didn't think it would be so meaningful in lots of different ways. Now I'm keen to finally get to read um, Literature and Evil, which I'm hoping to buddy read with Ashley in August. I think he could be the sort of person or the sort of writer who I would enjoy a lot of his stuff. So then also, at the end of last year in December, I made a video in which I talked about the most anticipated reads of 2018, and I think they, they were simpler times. They were all books that were going to be new releases in 2018, and I chose them to spell out the word, word December. So far, I haven't read any of those books. Now, it was a bit silly of me, really, to kind of make that video, because at the end of the day, I don't always buy new releases, and when I do, I wait until they come out in paperback, because hardbacks are just so expensive. I haven't read any of them, and I haven't actually read any new releases this year, I don't think, except for the Penguin European Writers. Now, these aren't exactly new. These are books that have been published before and are kind of classics, yet they've been republished, I guess, um, as part of this new series by Penguin to promote European writers that have kind of fallen off the radar and to promote the relationship between the UK and Europe, and um, I've read both of them now, Death in Spring by Mercé Rodoreda and The Beautiful Summer by Cesare Pavese. I really, I really enjoyed Death in Spring, that's definitely my favourite book, and probably one of my favourite books of the year so far. The Beautiful Summer wasn't as strong, it had a few things that I wasn't very happy with, but it was still a solid read and one that I did really enjoy at the same time. But the design of these books are just so beautiful and just so lovely and they're short books which make them really digestible and really enjoyable. The experience of reading them both was very different to what I had anticipated and I really enjoyed that and I want to check out more from these writers but also from this series and I know that they have another one coming out in autumn which I am very much anticipating and hope to get as soon as possible. One of my biggest surprises of the year was The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. Now this book was suggested to me by Ashley actually and I had wanted to read it before and I wanted to read it for a while and I kind of knew that I would like it but I didn't realise how much I would like it and the reasons that I would like it for. When I first started reading it actually I felt a little bit uneasy because it almost feels a bit like the zombie kind of books in which it has a very specific kind of plot and it kind of follows these conventions. It turned out not to be like that at all. I mean, it, d it definitely did have remnants of this zombie genre, but it wasn't. And it was like almost the precursor of it, I guess. It was kind of sci-fi, kind of apocalyptic, and it just had lots of different themes that I wasn't expecting. And it was actually a really deep book that connected me with lots of different ideas that I hadn't kind of considered before going into it, and it was very interesting to read. And I was nervous because it is a classic, well, a modern classic at least, and I'm not a massive reader of the classics yet. This book itself was 
so so well written that it was it has a timeless um, style and I think I really connected with that writing style. Yeah, that, it surprised me in the best way possible and I really did enjoy that. So another little personal thing was that I wanted to read more sci-fi and fantasy books. Now, I have done, I've read quite a few, but I'm having a difficulty in which I've been starting a lot of series and not reading the second series. I haven't read any sequels at all this year. Um, I have read a lot of first books, so I do need to start reading sequels. However, of all these sort of series that I have started, my favourite that I've read so far this year was A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. Now, this book was just wonderful. It was everything I didn't know I needed from a fantasy. The way that she crafted the world was so well done in the fact that it was very similar to our world, yet also a fantasy world, like, at its core. Um, so you were able to connect with it and you were able to understand each different point by referencing it to our own world, but then you would also just accept all these differences, like, easily, without even any questions asked. Like, the fact that there were dragons there, you don't... It's not so... It wasn't a problem at all. Like, it made sense in this world. And the way that it was formatted, as if it was the memoir of Lady Trent, and the way that she kind of set it up as if she was travelling with her husband, um, back in a Victorian era kind of way, and she was getting into the sciences, which was a predominantly male-dominated world, was just something that really captured my imagination, something that I could really sink my teeth into. It was some. It was a book that I enjoy reading those non-fiction kind of books, and then having it as a fantasy made it almost perfect for me. So that's one I definitely want to get the sequel to as soon as possible and read, because I think I'm going to enjoy the whole series. From my non-fiction books, um, my absolute favourite was one I took out at the start of the year called Refusal of the Shadow. Now this was my favourite because I went into it expecting it to be a sort of treaty on the use of surrealism within the Caribbean, and, and it was, but it was so much more than that. And actually, what I enjoyed most about it was that it gave you an idea of how people use ideas and make them their own, in which you're just given an idea and that idea is a tool, and you use that tool to best suit what you want to do, and you can do it in myriad different ways. And it was really interesting to see how these Caribbean poets um, and other writers used surrealism as a tool to kind of get their voices heard. As a marginalised voice becomes even more marginalised because it doesn't even fall into any category, and it gave you a really great insight into the struggle that these, these poets had at the time, and a way that their kind of thoughts about the own voice movement before the own voice movement became a thing. Um, I just, it was fascinating. Every single page, every single part of it, I enjoyed. But then I also found Slightly Fox. Now, Slightly Fox was only a four-star read for me, not a five-star, yet what I really liked about it is that it's, it's, it's something that I can subscribe to and get every quarter, I think it is, but it gives you insights into lots of books that are either out of print or have kind of really gone under the radar. So it introduced me to lots of new books. Now some essays are better than others and some books were more interesting to me than others and that's why I kind of gave it four stars because it wasn't every single essay was amazing. But it's something that I really enjoyed and really valued and it's something that I definitely want to get more into, um, sort of literary journals and finding new books through um, these sort of journals and these sort of magazines. So Slightly Fox was a wonderful read for me, just because it really allowed me to discover new things. And some of the books in this, uh, and some of the books in this one, which is number 57, I think, really appealed to me, and there's a lot of them that I want to now pick out and kind of find copies of myself, um, which in itself is a great experience, because you have these books that are under the radar and you can't just go into a bookshop and buy it, so you've actually got to search for them yourself, which is really exciting. <laughs> so overall, I think I've read a really good mixture of genres, um, size of books, themes of books, and author identities too. I've actually read a lot of books from non-British or non-American writers, or I've read a lot of works in translation. I think I've got a good balance of books by male and female authors. And yeah, I, I, I'm really pleased with how my reading is going. I, I haven't been too focused on tailoring it for specific goals, but every now and then when I have been thinking about specific goals for like certain events or whatnot, um, I kind of then begin to tailor it a little bit more, but I'm, I'm definitely enjoying what I'm doing so at the moment and 
I, I'm excited to see how it continues and to see if I do reach 100 books by the end of the year. A few things that I am excited for in the future of for books or things I am aiming to do. I'm excited for my Secrets of Jinshe read-along, which starts on Monday. You're more than welcome to join in. And I've got Alma Alexander, the author. Um, I've been emailing her and getting in touch and she's very keen to get involved in any way that she can. So that's really exciting um, and I can't wait to do that. I've also got a buddy read with Alex from What Page You Want coming up with The Temple of the Golden Pavilion by Yukio Mishima. And I'm really excited for that because I, I, I've been looking forward to that book for a while and I had forgotten that I had it um, until recently. So I'm excited to actually buddy read it with somebody and experience that because I really enjoyed my buddy read of um, The Accusation with Ollie and Emma. I'm also excited to read sequels in the series that I have started. So that's going to be an aim of mine to kind of finish the series, well, not, not so much finish the series, but get started on completing the series rather than starting too many and leaving them all too open. Books I am excited for in the future is definitely the third one in the European Writers series. Um, I'm kind of desperate for Cersei to come out as paperback because I'm really excited to have that on my shelf. And yeah, apart from that, I don't really know many more that are coming out. I'm excited to kind of pick up some more of the Penguin Modern Classics with the White Spines to add to my collection. And yeah, I'm excited to be reading. And I'm very happy to be sharing this reading journey with you guys. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time for another video. Bye bye.